Leveling guide? Yeah, leveling guide. The cat daddy has been out of the bag for a while now. <laughs> There's no denying that many eyes have seen my profile where I have all of the classes to level 80 and especially actually when I did my Shadowbringers relic videos where I literally have all of the best in slot relics, everyone was like, wait, how did you level all of these up? And so while I don't claim to be some sage of untold wisdom and forbidden knowledge, I did level them up pretty quick. It was, what, like three-ish weeks, four-ish weeks? It was a rough period of my life, but I got it done in a pretty short period of time, and I did learn a lot of tricks, and I'm going to try and share them with you in this video. Please forgive me, but a moment of your time. I really do genuinely feel that I need to mention this disclaimer, or I'm doing everyone a disservice. This guide is coming with the huge caveat that there are many different forms of content to level in this game, and I'm not going to really be mentioning them much in the guide, aside from right here, right now. Uh, and they are very valid, such as doing hunts, doing open world fate content, player versus player, and yeah, player versus player even is an option. There's extremely large amount of side missions, there's challenge logs, there's leave quests, and I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting more, but the point is if you ever feel tired of the ways of recommend, I definitely recommend to check out these other methods, such as PvP might be very refreshing after your 20th run of Files of the Dead, especially if you're running all the classes to 80. It is definitely a large undertaking and that's a lot of House of the Dead. So yeah, this is just only one path forward. It's what I did to brute force my way to level 80 on everything. And that's why I'm doing my recommendations as just one of the people crazy enough to do everything that quick. Uh, so recommendation isn't for everyone and shouldn't be taken as the only way. Sorry, I just needed to get that out of the way. Starting off, let's get experience boosts out of the way first. There are a lot of different options and some of them are very temporary and very quickly out leveled and others are going to be more constant factors that you can actually target all the way from 1 to 80. So the main factors are making sure that you are on a preferred world. This is a special world marked as preferred by the developers that gives you a buff called the Road to 70. This will massively, incredibly, so actually increase your experience gains to the point that yeah, people make a solid argument about starting on these worlds and then transferring over to a different world with friends. The logistics of that? Don't know, but that's a thing. It's preferred worlds out of the way. Let's talk about what you can do on any world to actively increase your experience gain. So first thing is always keep food up. You can click food twice to double the duration, that's okay. Uh, cheap food can also be bought from vendors and it still gives plus 3% experience, like hard boiled eggs or whatever. Uh, join any free company with running buffs is my second recommendation. This will usually have a heat of battle of rank 2 for an additional 10%. Rank 3 of that buff is much harder to get, but rank 2 should be very accessible. The third thing is, if possible, get a pre-order of the Endwalker expansion for a special Memphinia's Ing Rings that are going to further boost your experience gain by 30% up to level 80. There are other bonuses that you could get, like a level 70 and then a level 60 earring, I think. It's been a while, but I think that it, that's also a level 60 earring. But pick up something like that and that'll help a lot. Now, next up is the armory bonus, which is the special bonus unlocked to level alt jobs, really. Once your main job is really out leveling everything and say like max level, then you get a tremendously large boost to experience for alts of 100% bonus experience until that alt job hits level 70, then it tapers down to only 50% more experience till max level, but still that makes leveling extremely fast for alts. Now let's dive into the actual techniques. So the first technique is going to be do the main story quests. We're going to call this MSQ from now on for main story quests. Uh, this is going to give you more than enough experience to hit max level on one particular class, which will then unlock the highly effective armory bonus. But one thing that I do encourage is for everyone to try different classes and roles to get a feel for what really clicks with them, such as for me personally, I really had no intention when I returned for 2.0 of Realm Reborn to main Scholar. I thought the fairy was kind of flamboyant and really silly at first, but when I gave it a shot, I fell in love with the class, and now it has been my main ever since. So point being, you might ditch that gladiator into the dirt <laughs> that you started for, and then choose a machinist and pick that up, and need to level that up now. So be ready to try different things, and maybe your plans might change. So if possible, level 1 to 80 all the way on a single class, main story quest all the way. Now we're going to get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about level 1 to 17 on one character. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this. I'm pretty sure literally everyone watching this video knows what I'm going to say. 
yes, main story quest line all the way for this. I don't see there being a realistically better avenue for this starting bit. Maybe you could do leave quests, challenge logs, that might be options for you. You might be able to do guild heists. Again, I think main story quest should be what you really do for your first character to level 17 at least. Now that you're level 17 on just one class, great. That leads us into the next and real first recommendation, which is Palace of the Dead. I know many people might start to disagree with me, which is totally cool, but for newer players, in fact, especially for new players, they don't really have a taste for what their classes are like or what they can really do. Like, a level 16 Dragoon rotation is pretty upsetting to look at. That's upsetting. But if you open it up even a little bit more, all the way to 60, not even level 80, where a lot of things change. I know a lot of things change. But level 60 gives them a bit more of a view, and Palace of the Dead allows these newer players to experience level 60 on them, which gives them a lot larger view into the toolkit and what it'll actually feel like. And to enter Palace of the Dead, though you need only one single class at level 17, complete the main story quest of Copper Hell, and then complete the quest line, The House That Death Built. You can then enter Palace of the Dead, however, on any alt class, including at level 1. But that first class needs to be level 17 to finish this quest line, then you can take in all of your other alts at level 1 and just level them up. From there you can enter freely by talking to the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain, and then specifically for leveling, however, my strong, incredibly strong recommendation is not to start at floor 1, is instead to spam floor 51 to 60 and then reset the run each time. Ideally, you can find a speedrun group using the Party Finder tool under the Deep Dungeon section. Actually, this Party Finder recommendation still holds for heaven on high just as a heads up. I want to diverge a bit from what I'm recommending here because Palace of the Dead works wonders to level 60, it really does. But level 51 to 60 is where I start to bite my tongue a little bit on that recommendation. Heaven's War Dungeons done quickly is tremendously fast experience, extremely fast experience actually. But with one big caveat, the numbers of the dungeons are all odd numbers, so 51, 53, 55, 57, 59. That is actually a big deal because when you are at the same level as that dungeon is when that dungeon is going to give you the most experience, such as 59 to 60 is extremely fast spamming the great Google library dungeon. Dungeon, which leads to the technique that I've personally done a ton of, including when I was leveling 280 in Shadowbringers. And it's what I'm just going to call interleaving dungeon queuing when you're that same level. And then when you are on an even numbered level, such as 54, then you're going to consider doing something like leveling roulette or beast tribes or fates or challenge logs, something else to fill up that or even PVP. But when I'm talking about roulettes, when it comes to leveling, there's only two that I actually care about because they stand out by by far compared to the other ones. It's going to be either leveling roulette or main scenario roulette. You can get either castrum or you can get praetorium from that. Ideally praetorium because then you can kind of like turn on Netflix during the cutscenes and just tune out and <laughs> participate obviously in the combat. Like no one likes leech but just like turn on Netflix during the cutscene, watch it and get a ton of experience. It's praetorium's a good time. The main thing is leveling roulette or main scenario roulette. These are by a significant margin better than the other roulettes for experience. And main scenario, I do remember even at level 78 was giving me like a disgusting amount of experience. I don't want to say exact number, but I swear it was like 50% or something crazy. It was so good. But what I should emphasize from this technique is what we are doing here is we're using the daily roulettes to really massage those difficult levels because if you're not the same level as the dungeon, your experience is going to be curbed quite a significant bit. One big stinking problem with this though is if you are power leveling meaning you're gonna do more than one roulette in a day because remember the daily roulettes are limited to one per day then if you're power leveling i recommend you to avoid using the roulettes for levels for anything other than 50 to 51 60 to 61 and 70 to 71 specifically those ones these levels were once end game levels but the dungeons <laughs> during those end games kind of suck for leveling they're very rewarding poetic tombstones there are lots of incentives to run them but they are not great for leveling so use your best use of your lets to overcome these 50 60 70s definitely something i have to say actually cool from editing the problem i should explain here is that when you get to 60 then the problem is you need to get to 61 from 60 
So you'd need to either spam a level 59 dungeon, but that's weak experience. Or Palace of the Dead, that's also weak experience. And you can't queue up for a level 61 dungeon because you're 60, so you're really trapped. Now level 61 to 70 is Heaven on High, which is a very similar idea to Palace of the Dead, and I won't bore you with that rehash of details. The requirements are a level 61 character, and to hit floor 50 of Palace of the Dead itself, and then complete the quest, Tide goes in, Imperials go out, and then you can enter by talking to Kyose and level by spamming floor 21 to 30. Now realistically, you can do Heaven on High until you hit level 70, but I would say a valid and fine alternative is going into the leveling dungeons and again matching your level, so 61, 63, and so on like before. For level 70, my same recommendation is blasting away this level with roulettes because it's extremely painful, and I stand behind that fully. Another valid option, if you already have it unlocked for hitting level 71 for all jobs, is doing Beast Tribe quests, and I found that these can give you the extra kick that you need during this odd limbo period. The Beast Tribes specifically at level 70 are going to be the Kojin and Ananta, and if you already have it unlocked, then the Pixies are also a very valid and powerful option too. Side missions are also there in the world, although for complete transparency's sake, they were not a main method that I personally used to level. Now from 71 to 80 is the Shadowbringers expansion and brings forth all sorts of questions actually. I think at this point you need to start realistically asking yourself the question what your particular goals are here. If you want to get the best in slot weapon, the relic weapon for your main, or potentially alts, then strongly consider going into the Bojan content. Um, so that would be Bojan Southern Front, Zadnor, basically anything tied to the relic guide that I have covered on this channel. Um, in fact, the scenario <laughs> <laughs> the quote unquote leveling guide, if you're doing that, would be my relic guide. Then you're just chipping away at the relic and leveling at the same time. I do want to say anecdotal for sure. I did not take numbers, but name it. As someone who recently moved from World of Warcraft to Final Fantasy XIV himself, I actually leveled pretty quick in the Bojan Southern Front on Red Mage. So now we have Zadnor, Cast from Lagas Latoria, and the Dalaridia. Sadly, Delubrium Regine does need you to be level 80 to enter, so that's out of the question for leveling. But I should say that I'm probably getting ahead of myself there a little bit because that's more valid for all since you already have the level 80 requirements to unlock the relic content but if you're still not at level 80 then i say that the best way is undeniably gonna be main story quest and i know i'm totally being redundant there i can't say it enough it's super important but it just really does make a difference if you're wanting to aim your primary efforts at getting that relic weapon so the alternative path though which is what i personally did because we didn't have this content when shadowbringers was first launched was that interleaving dungeon pattern that i talked about before so level 71 73 75 77 and 79 should all be honestly a breeze going into their respective dungeon the levels between though are a little bit more muddled and i would put the roulettes in there uh, again definitely i'd consider the pixie beast trap quests i'd consider pvp um Definitely anything that I mentioned at the start of this video, challenge logs, um, PvP hunts, definitely very good to help those even levels. And then really just interleaving that should really land you at level 80. Anyhow, that is all for this guide, and happy leveling, and I hope that you enjoy Final Fantasy XIV to its fullest.